Hello and welcome to my first jewelry video. This is Pat from Passions and Pastimes and I've been collecting vintage jewelry since about May of 2018 and I was delighted to find out that I have quite a bit of vintage jewelry in my collection. Um, I also make jewelry so this is a piece that I purchased at the thrift store. Um, it was listed as as is. I plan to take these um, beads, glass beads, off of the um, stretchy cord and use them in some other jewelry. Even though this still has the uh, gift gallery tag, um, it's Murano glass bracelet, it indicates, and some of the beads are nicer than others, have, a, have more interesting color than others, but I certainly will have fun um, remaking this into other jewelry pieces. The same day I also purchased this pin that I had my eye on. It's not a vintage pin, um, same as the Murano glass isn't probably vintage, but this is a very well made and I think quite lovely leaf pin. Um, it's textured gold tone on the front with a smooth center vein of the leaf and it has no marking on the back and the usual safety clasp pin. Um, so this is something I'll put away and uh, wear when I want to wear a collection of leaf pins or something like that. The next piece that I collected that day was this pair of uh, whoops, this pair of vintage clip-on earrings from Hong Kong, and I've always liked these bead earrings, and I used to. Uh, thrift them and then repurpose them and I'm wishing now that some of the ones that I had repurposed I had kept. But you can see this lovely paint effect on the center of the um, faux pearls in the gray tone and it has some lovely um, sort of brownish colored rhinestones um, around the edges and they are marked Hong Kong here on the back of the clip. I'm not sure if you can see that in the video but it's very clearly marked Hong Kong. So I thought these were worth thrifting, and uh, I'll have to find an occasion on which to wear them. Uh, later in uh, that same week, I encountered a jewelry jar, which I will have uh, in another video. Um, but I also picked up this necklace with a glass pendant, because even though it's quite pretty uh, in itself, I'd like to remake this with other beads and put it into a much more upscale piece. And so I'm looking for, always looking for these pieces um, so that I can remake them into jewelry. And I'll probably give these plastic beads with it um, to my granddaughter so that she can make something blingy with them. Um, that day, the best piece that I found was this piece. I'm not sure if you are or recognize this at all. Um, it's a little bit flawed. It's missing a rhinestone at the top, but this is a Sarah Coventry piece from 1974 uh, called Contessa. There was an earlier Contessa line in the 60s, but this is definitely the 74 line. Um, lovely pink uh, and green rhinestones, so the green one's missing at the top with this confetti glass, almost opalescent look in the center stone. And on the back, what I like about this is that in addition to it being a pen and a pendant, it is marked Sarah Coventry down here, and up here it says Canada. So I haven't had a chance to um, research um, why some Sarah Coventry pieces were marked for Canada and some were not, um, but that's something I certainly hope to check out. I think this piece also needs a bit of cleaning because the other pieces I've seen um, have a much brighter gold uh, tone to them. This is very brown. Um, however, I don't want to clean it too much because I don't want it to look uh, unnatural, I guess, is the best way to put it. Also, at the same time, um, with the pin, I managed to uh, get the bracelet. And you'll see, unfortunately, I'm missing one of the oval uh, confetti glass pieces in the bracelet. Um, but I thought that the price uh, was well worth it for me to find, again, another Sarah Coventry piece marked um, 
Canada, which is where I live. So there's the Canada. And, uh, whoops. So this is the bracelet that um, goes with the collection, with the Contessa collection. And I'm hoping someday to find or purchase um, additional pieces, perhaps even get um, uh, uh, pieces that are not missing stones. Um, you'll see in the pin at the bottom here, there's a drop. And the earrings that go with this collection have a, uh, a post or clip part at the top and then a dangle uh, of this same shape at the bottom. Um, and the clip-on ones are not convertible, but the post ones I've seen, some of them are convertible where you can just wear the round piece or you can wear the round piece with the dangle. Um, so that I felt was uh, a nice thrift piece and certainly something interesting to add to my collection. I doubt that I will wear it unless I'm dressing up uh, for medieval days um, and wearing my, you know, wonderful medieval times costume. I think it would fit nicely with that. Um, this past week at my local um, Bible for Missions thrift store, I managed to score this. This is something I've been looking for in the wild for a while. Um, I don't know if I can uh, zoom in enough for, to, for you to see, but this is actually marked copyright Crown Trafari. Um, I have never found a Trafari piece when thrifting. I mean, it's only been a year. Um, but to find a Crown Trafari piece was even more special, and the price certainly was right. Um, I have not been able to find another uh, version of this online. I have been looking for sort of bird shape, seagull shape, and I'll have to do a little more looking, um, perhaps looking for, you know, abstract V. Uh, it's quite a streamlined piece, and I'd certainly be very happy to wear that myself. The same day, I picked up these pierced earrings. I don't think they're vintage, um, but I just thought that they were highly unusual. Um, they have a hinged bottom. And when they close, the back of the earring goes around your ear and becomes uh, like the ear wire, or sorry, the ear jacket, the jack wire jacket. Um, these were labeled and I couldn't read them. And when I got home, I put the uh, loop to them and discovered these were Nine West. So uh, probably not vintage, but I thought that they were really interesting. Um, great shape. The gold tone is nice and smooth. This looks like it's a little bent at the back, but that's something I can straighten out. And here's the other one of the pair. Um, I think this is how it should look as opposed to how um, the other one looks. So um, that can that's an easy repair on my part. And I'll see uh, when I can wear these. I think these would go with anything. Um, it was 50% uh, off white tag items at this date when I went thrifting. Whoops, sorry. Here's the front. This is a uh, piece of what feels like a piece of wood, very light wood, um, carved into what looks like a bonsai tree on a gold tone chain. It's nothing special, but uh, since I got it for half price, the cost of 25 cents Canadian, I couldn't resist. Actually, I didn't even know it was on half price till I got to the checkout. Um, and it is signed on the back with initials that looks like HC. So I, I may find at some point who uh, carved this. Um, in the meantime, I just think it's a really interesting piece. It's beautifully made, lovely curve at the top and at the bottom. Um, I just think it's lovely and the price was certainly correct. Um, and this is the last item I purchased that day, and you can see it's a pair of uh, post earrings, and uh, they, they're quite lovely looking. They, they may not look like anything special to you, but on the back they are marked in those gray reaches there, difficult, more difficult to see. Um, these are marked 925 um, with an A, a C, and a little arrow, an up arrow in between the characters. So I will have to research what those letters mean. Um, but definitely these will be fun to wear. I think they would look nice with um, uh, many Brighton bracelets because of the that uh, dark color and the flowers look similar to some of the Brighton pieces I've seen. 
And actually, I recently got a Brighton bracelet in a jewelry jar, so I can wear these uh, earrings with that bracelet, and I'll have to catch you up on that bracelet in the future. Next are the items that I just purchased in the last couple of days. Um, my local uh, value village. Um, I found this pin. It was a little more pricey than I would like, but not, you know, not outrageous. It's a lovely figural enameled um, like a maple leaf or a type of maple leaf. Um, beautiful colors, beautiful uh, movement in the piece. Um, and it's actually a pendant. I keep thinking it's a pin, but it's a pendant. And what I really like about it is the fact that the maker is Dorland. Not sure if I can uh, focus on that or not. D apostrophe O R L A N, and that is a uh, French Canadian manufacturer of vintage jewelry. Uh, it used to be whole, uh, sold uh, through our Hudson Bay stores, um, so I'll have to check the age of this. But it will make a lovely, lovely pendant. At the same time, I found a butler piece. Now this is a choker. Um, or necklace. It has the fold over clasp. It's gold tone. The shape uh, are reminiscent of uh, hearts, I guess, on the side. I'm not sure what else you would call them. Maybe waves or swirls. Um, and it's a little more lightweight than most uh, vintage pieces I find, but I thought since it was a butler piece and it's signed right here, that I thought it would be useful to pick it up. I certainly uh, would find uh, opportunities in which to wear it. There isn't uh, you know, any significant wear or discoloration. So I think that's a lovely piece uh, to put in my collection. It really is, um, one of my guiding principles really is that it's if I'm gonna wear it, I'll, I'll buy it. If I'm not gonna wear it, I have to really, really like it as a vintage piece um, because I'm not a reseller. And you can only wear and store so much jewelry. Though I always seem to find space for new pieces. I haven't figured out how that works yet. The next piece I found is actually a Sarah Coventry piece. Um, it's a lovely um, swirl at the top with these uh, leaves. And it's much nicer than many other scarf clips. It's not a pin or a pendant, it's a scarf clip. But I actually thought it was much nicer than many of the scarf clips I find. And uh, I don't wear a lot of scarf clips. But I certainly would take this and try to convert it to a pendant or a pin. And it's marked Sarah Coventry right here um, at the top. Uh, not marked Canada, but at least it says Sarah Cub. And finally, I found this piece to be really quite intriguing. Um, it looks like damascene. It, it has the um, two different colors of inlaid wire, gold and silver tone. I'm not sure if they're, if they're actually really gold or silver. And they're laid into the oxidized steel. Um, a very oriental um, picture. Not something I would usually pick up, but I haven't found any um, damascene pins like this with the two colors of wire inlay. And I thought for the price that this would be a very good example to have on hand and to compare to other pieces. Uh, it's set into a nice scalloped uh, edge has a pin on the back and it is actually marked Amita, A-M-I-T-A. So I'll have to do some research on that maker and I have to fix the pin. It's been uh, bent, uh, unfortunately, but that's easy enough to do with um, the tools that I have for working with jewelry and wire. So that's the end of my pieces collected in the last couple of weeks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please uh, give me a thumbs up if you thought it was worth it. It's after all only my very first video. Um, hint, hint. Um, uh, subscribe and share and I hope to be bringing you more videos in the future. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.